Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Wednesday, the 24th of March. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And once again, we will be singing our hymn throughout the service. It's a familiar one, The Lord's My Shepherd, and we'll sing the first verse now. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. And our psalm is Psalm 128, which we say together. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will sing the second and third verses of our hymn. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill, for Thou art with me, and Thy rod and staff my comfort still. Our Gospel is John 10, 1-18. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and out and find pasture the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this continues on uh, following the healing of the blind man, and Jesus starts to talk about now his relationship with the rest of his, his hearers. And he talks about uh, being the shepherd. He talks about all kinds of different images here. Uh, in fact, his analogy seems to shift as it goes along. Sometimes he's the shepherd, sometimes he's the gate. But I think one of the really interesting points here is that he says that the sheep hear his voice and so they follow him. You know, there's sort of two main ways to shepherd sheep. Um, anyone who has uh, sheep dogs, uh, especially in England, we used to watch them and they used to do sheep dog trials and you would see the sheep dogs going around behind the sheep and nipping at their heels and they would sort of gather them and send them through the gate. Um, nipping at people's heels, you know, that kind of thing is, is not Jesus' way. Jesus leads not from behind by pushing, but leads from ahead by, and the sheep follow him. So, so really, he says he hears, the sheep hear his voice. So we follow the voice of Jesus. It reminds me of those old records that my dad had, Vic Crow, and, and, and I can't, it was RCA, I think it was. And the label on the record um, uh, had a dog listening to this old Victrola, um, this old uh, record player that with that great big horn that comes out, and the dog has got its head cocked, and um, it says it hears its master's voice. And I mean, the point is, is that this record is so good that a dog would think that it was his own master. But um, we need to attune our ears to hear our master's voice. Um, and in order to do that, there's many different ways, but one of the best ways to do that is to spend some time in stillness. Because uh, Jesus' voice is an interior voice. Jesus' voice is something that we have to attune our, our ears for. Uh, but we can hear Jesus calling and leading us uh, from the front, uh, guiding us in the way that we are to go as we follow him in his mission. Uh, so listen, you know, spend some time every day just to quieten down and listen. You know, spend some time with, with Jesus. Open your heart to Jesus and Jesus will guide you. Let us continue as we sing the next verse of our hymn. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with all anoint and my cup overflows. And now let us say the words of the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And in our prayers today, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. We pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, 
that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for the sick, uh, the sick that we know, each one of us, the sick of our parish, and those that we don't know. In our cycle of prayer for the sick, on Wednesday today, we pray for Lynn Aitkins, Jane, Pat and Les Matthews, Jody Cocker, Corrine Newell, and Gord Moyer. We pray, O oh Lord, for each one of them and all of the sick. We pray for any who are receiving treatment or tests, those who are experiencing anxiety because of their health. We pray, O oh Lord, that your gracious presence might fill them with peace at this time. And we pray for the healing touch of Jesus in their lives, that they might have wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the healthcare community and uh, those who are so exhausted and working so hard to try and keep us all safe. We pray that all people might cooperate with the guidelines of public health, that lives might be saved, that people who are stretched to the limit will see an end to all of this and a return to some kind of normal normality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the aged and those who are particularly vulnerable to COVID-19. We pray for their caregivers, their families. We pray, O oh Lord, to keep them safe and healthy. And we pray that their loved ones might be able to reach out in safe ways to help them mentally, that they might still enjoy life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our refugee family. We pray for Karima, for Mohammed, for Fatin, and for Ahmed. We give thanks for each one of them, O oh Lord. We pray for them as we know they are under great stress and worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we uh, pray for 10 more households in our parish list. And if you are joining us from another parish or community, I invite you to pray for members of your community at this time. Today, we pray for Colin Campbell and Louise Van Waldron, for Melissa and Adam Capes, for Alan, Chelsea and Alice Kerrigan, for Tim, Allison, Abigail, Madison and Eloise Cahey, for Jody Cocker, for John and Diana Chandler, Sarah Chandler, Barbara Chang, Jason, Lynn, Logan, Navin, Ethan, and Sarah Chandler, and Eric and Kelly and Evan Charles. We give thanks for each one, O oh Lord. We pray for their health and safety, and we pray that they might know they belong to a community of faith which cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for my friend Will, who is going through a um, difficult time, uh, lots of stress. And we pray for all people who are overworked and filled with stress at this time. Give them your peace which passes understanding and guide them into a way which leads to life and fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, today we pray for the Diocese of Ballarat and the Anglican Church of Australia. We pray for their bishop and the clergy and people of that diocese. And we pray that they might know and celebrate that the world is praying for them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for another brother of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, and today we pray for Brother Keith Nelson. We give you thanks for his words of wisdom. We pray for him as he is a part of a team during Lent to teach us about contemplative prayer at this time. We pray 
for his words of wisdom, for the insights that you give him. We pray that your grace might continue to flow through him and that he knows that there is a community which prays for him as he prays for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray our night prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray our collect for this week. Almighty God, you alone can bring order into our lives. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing the last verse of our hymn. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us in evening prayer tonight. I hope you join us every night of the week, including Fridays for Compline. And uh, I hope that you have a restful night's sleep and all God's blessings to you. Good night.